what made the MOE legislate a separate regulation to manage the, the biocide, especially focus on the transferring the biocide management from the KREACH to the KBPR. And then I will explain the, the structure and the, the major elements of the KBPR. And i like to the, share the possible impact to the industry and some issues involved. Yeah, therefore, through the implementation of the KREACH, the MOE plan to take a key role in regulating all kinds of the biocide as a whole except for once properly controlled in other regulations. But I'd like to highlight two points in view of the biocide management. Among 510 PEC substances, some of the biocide active ingredients are included. Also, the MOE designates high-risk products and gives safety and standard and labeling criteria based on its risk assessment. So far, there are 18 high-risk products, including three biocide products. Uh, they are the uh, disinfectants, repellents, and wood preservatives. In line with the, the KREACH, last October, MOE and KFDA prepared voluntary safety management guideline for the, the household chemical products. As a response to this program, major household chemical product manufacturers or distributors such as PNG or Handcare and Rocket Bankizer participated in this program and agreed to disclose all of the ingredients in 50 product items. As outcomes, all ingredients except for the content information really, uh, will be published to the public. However, CBI information such as content or the confidential chemical name can be protected except for the chemicals with insufficient toxicological data or hazardous chemicals. So under the KBPR, the MOE makes clear the definition of the biocide the biocides include all active substances and biocide products and treated articles altogether. KBPR does not apply to some of the chemicals which are already regulated properly in other regulations. It is easy to understand, but there are some issues. As you see, the cosmetics and its ingredients are not scope of the, the K-rich, which means all ingredients in the, the cosmetics and final cosmetic products are excluded from the KBPR. Ministry of Industry, they will take products with low release of chemicals like electronics or electronic devices. And MOE will be the main ministry to deal with the, the biocide products as a whole and the house chemical, household chemical products with a high release of chemicals. Therefore, repellent agent or the fly or mosquito attracting agent and humidifier disinfectants, which were controlled by the KFDA, will be transferred to the scope of the KBPR. Actually, those products are necessary to be approved to place it on the market by the KFDA, but once the, the KBPR will take into force, we expect those products should go through product authorization again by the KBPR. As I mentioned, currently 18 items are managed as high-risk products under the KREACH. Once the KBPR enforced, then these products will be transferred and managed by the KBPR. But the terminology will be a little bit changed to the household chemical product, subject to the, the compatibility, the very Verification. According to the new regulation, the MOE has a plan to exp expand the number of the products subject to the compatibility verification more and more, and then they will give safety and labeling standards through risk assessment. As for those products, testing is necessary to meet this standard, and re verification is required every three years. This picture shows the main element of the KREACH. Firstly, the approval of the bioactive ingredient, and secondly, the authorization of a biocide product containing one or more of the biocide active ingredient. And treated article intentionally treated with or incorporates authorized, bi authorized bi biocide products. 
Yeah, this diagram shows the whole picture of the biocide management in the KBPR. Once the KBPR is first, it will require the industry to notify the existing biocide active ingredient and its related information such as the, the chemical name and volume and the biocide product types. And the MOE will assess them step by step based on the priority of biocide product types. This is a kind of the long journey during 10 years. Once a biocide active, is, active ingredient is approved, and then it can be used in the, the biocide product. The both the active ingredient approver and the, the product authorization need to be renewed every 10 years. The bottom line is a biocide product containing the CMRs and PBT substance and endocrine disruptors should not be authorized at all and eventually uh, the, those products should be phased out from the market. Okay, let's look at the, the timeline of the KBPR. Assume that the KBPR will be enforced January 1st of 2019, the first three months, notification of existing the biocide active ingredient in the market uh, should be done. And in September, the grace period for the approval, depending on the product type, will be announced. And then evaluation and uh, approval of existing biocide will be done until 2030. One thing uh, to notice is that there is no grace period for the new biocide active ingredient and the authorization of existing biocide product needs to be done within two years of approval of existing biocide active containing this product. As you know, the MOE announced amended K-REACH and depending on the tonnage band, all of the existing chemicals should be registered by two, uh, 2030. And then the MOE's targeting two regulation will be enforced at the same time, the January 1st of 2019, the K-REACH timeline is ex exactly overlapped by the, overlapped with the KBPR timeline. That's why we are very concerned about the in infrastructure such as expert resources and testing capability and consultancy capability and so on. The biocide management in Korea gets strict beyond the K-REACH, especially for the data requirements and product authorization and labeling and packaging and risk assessment for the product. And the KBPR has very similar elements of the, to the EU BPR. And then uh, you, you need to keep an eye on the sub-regulation of KBPR in the near future. <laughs>